Hello. If you're a Windows user and are slightly curious about Linux, but you think Linux is too complicated to use and set up, so you just stick with Windows and carry on, this video is for you. First of all, I want to show you how easy it is to use. And in the second part of the video, Thelma, the AI bot lady, will show you every step needed to install Linux side by side with Windows. So you can dip your toes in the water to see if you like it without dumping Windows. If you don't like Linux, you can just carry on using Windows. So here is Scott's Linux desktop. Let's see how difficult it is to use. This is the start button. But as Linux can be configured however you want it, Scott has made this his Scott OS button. But it works just the same as the Windows start button. When you click it, it shows your favorite applications, and you left click on one of them to start it up. So far, does this look complex and difficult, or is it the same as Windows? Along the bottom edge, you can see what programs are running and switch to them just like Windows. Over to the right, there are a few extras that Scott has installed, but other than those, there's the volume control and a clock with a calendar. The rest of the screen is your desktop. You can cover it with icons if you prefer, but Scott doesn't do that. So now you've seen how to use Linux. Is it really complicated and difficult? So well, now I'll hand you over to Thelma, the AI girly bot, who will show you every step of installing Linux, but keeping Windows intact. Hello. I am Thelma. Today, I will go through every step to install Linux side by side with Windows so you don't have to commit yourself to using Linux. I'm not going to assume you know how to do something already and skip that bit. I'll show you every step. This way, you can just dip your toes in the water to see if you like Linux first. If not, you can simply go back to using Windows like a mindless sheep. Okay, before I get started, big disclaimer, make sure you have a backup of anything on your Windows PC, that if you were to lose it, you'd be really upset, both with yourself and me. Scott has done this procedure many times and not had any issues, but there is a very slight chance that there might be a power cut halfway through, or your hard drive has a glitch. And you could totally trash your PC. So, if you follow these instructions, Scott takes no responsibility for trashing your system and making you upset. Do the following instructions at your own risk. And of course, back up your stuff. Your computer could explode at any time. So back up your stuff. Let's go. First of all, You'll need a USB pen drive with nothing of importance on it, as the pen drive will be totally wiped, so again, back up your stuff. The USB pen drive needs 3 gigabytes of space. Now, we need to go download two items, Linux itself, and a nice free program to put Linux onto the USB pen drive. There are approximately 5 billion different versions of Linux, give or take a million. The reason for that is that it is free and open source, so any geek like Scott can download it, mess with the code, and hey presto, we have yet another Linux to choose from. From the list on this website, we can see that Linux Mint is currently the second most popular Linux at the time of recording this. We're going to download that one. So, go to the Linux Mint website. The link is in the video's description box. Scroll down the page a little and you can see there isn't just one Linux Mint, there are more choices. I would recommend the one called XFCE, as it is very lightweight, so will run on a 20-year-old PC. But also, it's very simple and clean, without any bells and whistles to overwhelm you. That might take a while to download, as it's nearly three gigabytes. So, if you have slow internet, pause this tutorial here. The next download is called Rufus. You can download that here. 
This program will take the large Linux download and put it on your USB pen drive as if you were to simply copy Linux onto it, then it wouldn't work. It needs to done in a certain way. And this free program makes that very easy for you. If you have to wait for that to download, pause the video here for a bit. So here in Windows, you can see it's taking up all the space on the hard drive. What we're going to do later in this video is squish that down a bit to make room for Linux. Make sure Rufus and the Mint Linux disk is on your desktop like this. Next, double click on Rufus to start it up. It should look like this. Don't worry about all these settings. We only need to change two things. The first one at the top. Device. Make sure your USB pen drive is plugged and it should show up in the list. So just select it from the list. Scott only has one drive, the E drive, and that's the USB pen drive. Below that, Click on the button mark select. Now you need to choose the Linux disk that you want to put on the USB device. So choose the Linux Mint file on your desktop. The rest of the setting, just leave them alone or you'll break it. Now you click on the button that says start. It might now ask you some questions. The first one, just go with whatever is recommends you do, as it's very smart. If there's a yes, no question, it's usually best to click on yes. Like this one here, just click on yes. Ignore all that nonsense. I'm gonna click on yes a few more times now. I even got time for a little rant. Windows and Windows software overcomplicates things asking questions that you have no idea of the answer. Linux is simple compared this nonsense, like installing a Windows program. You have to like click on yes, next, yes again, next, install, yes, next, and finally, it starts installing. None of that crap happens on Linux. Okay, I've click on yes about 25 times. Now finally click on OK to wipe the USB drive and put the Linux disk file onto the USB pen drive. This again might take a few minutes, so pause the video if you're playing along at home. Once you see this green progress bar, everything is going fine and it probably won't ask you to click on yes anymore. Once that's all done, Leave the USB drive plugged in and restart Windows. Now, this bit is a bit tricky. Somewhere on the screen it will say something like this. Press F12 to select the boot device. However, due to PC manufacturers not having any standard, it will say something else on your PC. It might be fate. F9, F2, escape, fill even. You get the idea. Something will show on the screen that mentions booting or boot device. Press whatever key you need to. Again, you'll see something like this. But yours may look different. Most PCs will give you a list of hard drives. Own drives? and may even mention your USB drive by name, like Toshiba USB drive or something. Mine sees the USB drive as a CD-ROM, so I'm gonna select that. What you're attempting to do here is tell the PC that you want to start up using your USB drive instead of the hard drive like you would do normally. If everything has gone well, this is the screen that you will see. It won't be different on each PC, as this is the USB drive menu. At this point, it's not actually installed. It's running from the USB drive itself. You can use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to move up and down. 
but there's really no need, as the very first option is the one you want. So, just press return to start Linux Mint. It's now going to run a live copy of Mint. It's not actually installed anything yet. This allows you to even have a little play with Linux before you install it. However, it won't run as fast as it normally would, and you can't really save any changes. It's just designed to allow you to play without making changes to your hard drive. Once it's loaded up, you should see the Linux Mint desktop. Feel free to pause the video and have a look around. You can't do any damage. If you were to try to install Linux now, it would say there's no room on the hard drive because Windows is taking up all the space. So we can use a program on the USB drive called Gparted. You can search for it or select system and then find Gparted on the list here. Click on it to start it up. Don't be too overwhelmed by this. It's a re-rapsination of your hard drive, with Windows taking up all the space. All we're going to do here is swish Windows down a bit to make some room for Linux. Windows has a small partition first, then the larger part after that. Then there's one megabyte of empty space. See the menu at the top of the window. Click on partition and then choose. Resize. Move. The yellow bit is all your window files and the white area is the free space. So all you need to do is grab that black arrow on the right hand side and drag it to the left. See the bit that says free space following. You want to drag the slidey thing until that number says about 16,000. It does not have to be exact. That's just, I th think, a good value to choose for now. You can change things later anyway. What you're asking it is to reduce Windows by 16 gigabytes and make that space available as free space so that Linux can use it. Once you have yours looking like this, Click the Resize Move button at the bottom right of that window. It's not actually going to do it right away. You can think of it as planning what you'd like the hard drive to look like. The plan now shows that gray area on the right is unallocated, which means we can install Linux in there. Click on Edit, then Apply All Operations. now before you continue. This is only going to take a few seconds on Scott's PC because of technical reasons. But on your PC, it's going to take anything between 30 minutes and 5 hours. Or even more if you have an old PC. So you might want to click the apply button and go do something else for a long time. Maybe go for a walk in nature, which is good for the soul. Or maybe meditate, which is also good for the soul. Or masturbate. Just go find something to do with your time while it does this long process. So, that's finally done. Has it been that long? I'm sorry. There's just no quick way to do that. But I have some good news. If you got this far and you see, completed operation like is shown here, we can now finally install Linux on the hard drive. Trust me, it'll all be worth it in the end. Now what G parted is showing the actual contents of the hard drive with the gray unallocated space. So, let install Linux in there. To get things going, 
Just double click on the desk icon on the top left of the screen. The first question it's going to ask is what language you'd like to use. If you're English speaking like me, you'd probably go with that. Otherwise, if you choose Japanese or something, it's going to make using Linux really difficult. So choose English to make things easier. The next question is what keyboard you have. Usually you choose either US or UK, which are very similar anyway. Next is an optional install. I'd recommend ticking the box. It installs files that play videos and audio files. So without it, you might have problems streaming off Netflix or watching videos on Odyssey. This bit makes things very easy for you. It knows Windows 10 is installed, so its very first option is to install Linux alongside it. So, leave the option as it is and click the Install Now button. It then shows some information for geeks, so you can ignore that. Unless you are a geek. It's just a final warning that it's about to make changes to your hard drive. So, just click the Continue button to carry on. Now it's asking where heck in the world are you? In this case, it's used witchcraft or something to figure out Scott is in the UK. But if it doesn't choose the right timism for you, just click on the map. The next set of questions are easy. Your own name? Hopefully you'll know what that is. If not, phone your parents. They'll remember what your name is. You can give your computer a name like Ralph or Dave or something. You then need to choose a password. Don't choose X as your password as this is lazy. Choose a long password, as you won't have to type it in very much, especially if you tick the box. Log in automatically. Finally, click the continue button. This is going to take about 30 minutes to an hour. It should not take five hours like last time. However, it will take quite a while. And as it's not going to ask you any more stupid questions, you can go do something else again for a little while. When you see this little window appear, it means it's done. You now have Windows and Linux on the same PC. So click the Rest Start Now button. It's saying that you should remove the USB pen drive now, as you won't be needing it anymore, as it's going to start up from the hard drive from now on. There. It's now restarted. From now on, you'll get this grub menu. If you don't press anything, it'll go into Linux. But if you want to go into Windows, you'll need to press the down arrow key twice and then press enter. Then Windows will start as usual. But for today, let's go into Linux. Okay. That wasn't too bad, right? This is the first of many videos. The rest of the series will show you what to do next. Custom color sim. Adding some pretty wallpaper for the desktop. Using some of the programs that come pre-installed. The whole reason for making this series is to show people. It's not that difficult like it was in the 1990s. It is easier to use than Windows. And there's Pretty much nothing that Windows can do that Linux can't do.
It even plays your Windows only games. And slider faster frame rate too. Join me next time to see just how good Linux can be. With just a little know how. Thanks for watching. See you soon.